Thanks everyone for being here. My name is Eric Tang and I'm the co-founder and CTO at LivePeer. Um, you know, today, um, you know, it's, it's good to be back here and, 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 and talking about, um, you know, kind of the, the, this new topic. And, um, you know, this, this, this is something that I'm not sure if people, you know, in this, in this room that are doing video engineering um, think about on a daily basis. Uh, but I really do believe this is a problem and a topic that we'll start to face, that we'll, we'll as, as a community, we'll start have to face really seriously in the next couple of years. So um, I, today my goal, you know, is a short talk, is to kind of just introduce uh, some of the concepts here and, and you know, raise a little awareness of, of the problems that we're fang, facing and, and some of the interesting work that's being done around this. Um, a little bit about myself, I've been, you know, working in the tech startup ecosystem since 2008. And in, to, in 2013, I started a company called Wildcard. And uh, it, it was a news aggregation service and one of the top apps in the App Store back in 2015. So, um, you know, back then we, we were solving this problem of, okay, like, there was this information bubble that we're all in, right? Like, so our opinions were being skewed by how we're, um, how, what, what's being recommended to us. Uh, we, were, we were creating these news bundles using data and editorial techniques to try to create a more holistic uh, presentation of what's going on in the world on a daily basis. Um, and, and if I compare where we are today versus where we were back, you know, seven, eight years ago, Unfortunately, I think we're in a, just a much worse situation in terms of misinformation on the internet, right? So, so um, there, there's a lot of good work that's being done right now to, to think about how do we address these problems from, from a technical perspective. So today, um, I want to give a quick introduction uh, about the content authenticity initiative, um, talk a little bit about the, the kind of the technical overview uh, and, um, and, you know, uh, sprinkle in some future work that's been going on. So um, if there's one goal that I have today is that, you know, if you're watching at home or if you're here, um, the, the, if you were can, um, you know, fire up your browser and go to content, uh, contentauthenticity.org and check out the work that those, um, the nice people are doing there, I think uh, that would be mission accomplished for me. Um, so uh, a little bit about the, the initiative. It's, it's an industry consortium that's been uh, going on for a couple of years and includes, you know, a couple hundred companies there, right? Um, spearheaded by Adobe, but um, companies like the BBC and, and you know, camera, camera manufacturers like Can Canon are all, you know, in this, in this group. And, and the, really the big goal is to add verifiable trust information into the, con the, to, into the media bundle itself using some of these modern, um, well, not even too modern, right, but like um, cryptographic signing techniques to include the, the, um, the history of the content into the media that's being delivered. So that's a mouthful, but really what it means is, you know, we follow this principle of, you know, trust, but also verify, right? It, we just get the information to be able to verify the content as we're streaming the video. Um, so there's been some good work that's already done in the space. Here's an example from the New York Times, right? Here's an image that we see um, that, that we can actually carry that information from who shot the, uh, who shot the, uh, the, um, the photo to how that photo is being color adjusted through uh, Adobe Photoshop to how it's being published via the CMS at the New York Times. And all of that information is kind of carried along in this media production uh, workflow that, you know, at the end, when I'm seeing the image uh, on a website, I can try to download the image and change it and republish it and pretend at the New York Times, but I really can't do that because there's already um, signed information on there that proves that the image has been, has been tampered. Uh, if we take that one step further, um, we can now apply this to generative AI, which you know, I think is going to be a big threat for, for our industry, right? Um, here, there's an example uh, of Adobe Firefly. Now, all the, information, uh, all the images that are generated by Firefly is going to include this authenticity information. Not only do we know um, the, the, the model that's being used to generate the image and the version of the model, it also contains the prompt that's used to generate this model, right? So now it all of a sudden uh, creates this new opportunity to remix the content um, by, for example, changing the prompt or adding new prompts to, to add additional information here. Um, 
a, a few, taking this now one step further, it's a hypothetical example based in real world story, right? Grimes, a uh, famous musician, has promised her fan base that um, anyone can use her songs to build AI models that then generate new songs that sound like Grimes. And she will split the royalty for these songs 50-50 with the fan base. Now, that's a really exciting opportunity for AI artists, but uh, without some kind of authenticity information in the media that's generated, it's gonna be a really intractable problem to figure out who gets, to, who gets paid how much, right? So having these type of information is kind of the building block for a future um, kind of a more scalable technical in technology enabled solution that can, uh, that can have this type of um, you know, interesting creativity that happen at scale. So you know, the CAI, CAI kind of break this problem down into a couple of different steps, right? First, when uh, content is being created, uh, the creator gets to sign uh, the video that's, um, that, that's you know, shot on the camera. Um, it gets, pu gets passed down to the editing tools, for example, in Adobe Premiere or, or Photoshop, something like that. Um, it, it can further add information about how it's being edited. Um, when, when then it gets pushed to the publishing uh, software, so things like the CMS can add further information about who, which publication is publishing that information, so that when the viewer is seeing the video, we already, we already have that, you know, hitting the player, right? Uh, and finally, when we're, if we're archiving the content, that, um, that um, you know, the, the kind of the provenance information is being archived uh, with the media. Now, for all of these to work together, uh, the software that's used and the services that are used in this media chain needs to be able to speak the same language, right? And that's where kind of the, a lot of the technical work that's been done. Um, so uh, there's an there's a organization called the C2PA, which is a standards body, kind of the, the technical counterpart of the CAI. And, and, and the groups there have been working on a spec for the last couple of years, and, and it's actually pretty well uh, considered, um, especially when it comes to uh, video streaming. It takes care of thinking about how we can, we can capture all of this information as the video data is being manipulated al along the line, whether it's being transmugged or transcoded into different uh, bit rates and renditions, right? We can now pass, um, as long as the, you know, the software and services um, are adhere to the standard, we can actually pass that information down the line, which is really cool. Um, so I, um, I don't have time to go through all the, all the different steps here, but um, I do wanna highlight an example just to show like how this can work in a real you know, video streaming service situation, right? So imagine there's a you know, company um, X um, that does say like the social network, right? We can, um, for, we can use um, private keys that, to, ident uh, to represent each of the users in that service. Now, when the user uploads a video, that video is being signed by the user's um, private key and then upload it to a video streaming service, right? It can be any video streaming service uh, as long as it's C2PA standard uh, compliant. Now, when that goes through the video service, you know, transcoded, segmented, um, you know, cached around the world, delivered through the CDN, that information will be, um, you know, will be passed down. So that when it hits the browser, the video player will be able to understand it now there's already a Dash compliant video player that, that does this, uh, that'll show you whether the video has been tampered along the line. There's also a, a browser plugin that already exists, allows you to uh, kind of read all that information in, in human readable format. Um, and and there's, there's gonna be different ways for us to think about how to manage the keys, right? The user, we can, we can get, ask the user to manage the key, the user can delegate the signing mechanism to the, to the application developers, or we can even think about further um, decentralizing the, the place that where we store that authenticity information, maybe using something like the blockchain, right? Um, yeah, lots of open source developments happening in this ecosystem. Um, there's JavaScript SDKs for kind of the front end stuff, uh, Rust SDKs for the, for the back end service stuff. There's a Python, a Python SDK is also available. And um, I believe there's a, a decent amount of FFmpeg work even being done to kind of uh, add, uh, add all that information into the, into the video pipeline. Um, some future work that, that I'm pretty excited about. One is uh, kind of um, adding content authenticity information in the newer wave of video technology that's coming out. 
uh, we're specifically working with NetInt to kind of enable AV1 um, kind of codec in the LiveBear ecosystem, but you know, all of this is, is open work. Uh, but at, we can now add uh, authenticity information to AV1 videos. And I think that's an interesting new capability for, for kind of the next generation codecs. Um, as well as um, we're also working with Aten on a, um, a, a proof of concept to show how this technology can be applied to a news video publishing uh, workflow. Um, so um, all the way from kind of a news van out in the field or a citizen journalist uh, on their device capturing real world footage. Um, now they can sign that, um, send that video along to the editing room, to the newsroom, all the way to the public, through the publication workflow so that uh, at the end of the day when people are watching the news, they can have that information. Um, so yeah, definitely check out this, uh, check out this work. Go to the Content Authenticity Initiative uh, website. Um, Live here is doing a lot of work here also. We're doing open source stuff. Uh, we have a booth downstairs. Uh, if you're interested in this, come and talk to us. Thanks. Thank <laughs> you.